Good evening, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, if you could do the usual, we've got the five minute countdown just to make sure that everything's running smoothly and you can hear me. So uh, do us a favor, just let me know in the chat that you can hear me coming through loud and clear. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you, folks. Uh, thanks, Brian. Good to know you can hear me. And uh, Luke, yes, I definitely will. <laughs> What do you reckon to the timer then? I'm setting myself a challenge every time we do these to try and do, try and do something different. You wouldn't believe how long that took me to do. Too long, way, way too long. <laughs> Just checking the type, the microphone's turned on. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Uh, which, if I just let you know now before I forget, uh, is going to be the last webinar that you see in this location. I got asked the other night when I was doing a talk if I had a serious case of OCD and if I'd measured everything in my old office and made my Devon office exactly the same. That's not the case. I've still kept hold of this place until the 19th, which is obviously this coming week when our broadband should be connected and then I can start doing it. So this will be the last webinar for two weeks. So in two weeks time, we'll be doing another one 
hopefully you'll see me in a brand new location with a whole new setup. So uh, let's just do me graphic. There we go. Didn't forget it that time. Um, tonight, then we're going to be going through tethering. Uh, it's going to be kind of like an overview of uh, how you do it, what software there is, uh, and also some of the possibilities that you've got with doing it like mobile and what have you. So it's something that I have done all the time, pretty much from the day I started the photography side of things. I was told to. Uh, I was told that it was a good thing to do. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, what is tethering? Well, basically, it is where you take a picture with your camera, and you get that picture to not only show up on your camera, but also show up on your laptop or your desktop, or maybe even your mobile device okay and there are loads and loads and loads of benefits of tethering some of them to name but a few obviously the first one's going to be the fact that you're seeing your images bigger now that is a that is a huge benefit that's probably one of the things that has helped me to improve my photography over the last few years and the first thing is definitely talking more spending more time talking to the people uh that um that I'm photographing so you can get more about them. I think I might have talked about this in a previous one whereby don't treat every photo shoot as another photo shoot. Treat it on a case-by-case -case basis. And that's been a huge benefit for me knowing how to photograph somebody and what I should do by talking to them first, I found out whether I should use flash or constant light as, as an example. But another thing is actually seeing the images coming through really big on the screen. If you tuned in to a webinar we did, I think, was it last week or the week before? I can't remember now. Uh, where we photographed, uh, where I photographed my friend Brian Jukes, who's in the chat room, photographed his Mustang. And one of the things I talked about was the advantage of shooting tethered so you can see it nice and big on the screen. So that way we could check what areas of the picture have been lit and what, it, what areas of the, of the car we need to work on. It's pretty much the same when you're photographing a person. You know, you can kind of see it nice and clear. You can notice all the little things that maybe you wouldn't notice on the back of your camera. And yes, I know you can press your zoom button and zoom in and then twiddle around with your joystick and move around the picture. But I find that personally, because I'm kind of talking about this from a personal point of view, the benefits of it tethering. I don't like to have to zoom in, move around, then zoom out again. I find it really, really fiddly. And I did miss stuff doing that. Other advantages I've got is that it slows you down. It definitely slows you down rather than just being run and gun taking pictures. You take a picture, calm down, look at it. Right, now assess. What else do I need to do? What can I move? How can I change this? How can I make things look better? So that's another one. Another thing that reason why peep, some people tether is because it gives you an instant backup. Okay, it gives you an instant backup. You might be somebody who uh, likes to shoot, um, you know, you'll shoot your, with your camera. So the as you take the pictures, the camera holds onto them on the actual card, the memory card, but also you like to send images over to the computer so you've instantly got a backup. Not every camera allows you to do that and not every uh, software yeah, that you use for tethering allows you to do that. But another advantage, a huge advantage, is that it allows you to remotely control your camera. Okay, so you can be hands off, not just on one camera, but you could also set it up so that you have multiple cameras. So there's loads and loads of benefits to tethering. Uh, I'm not here to kind of convince you that you should be tethering. Hopefully by me going through this, you're going to kind of think, well, you know what, I think I'm going to give that a go. Uh, and it's not a case of just having more kit with you. So I'm going to show you how you don't have to have a lot more kit with you when you're out on location, especially doing uh, tethering. But when it comes to tethering, um, hold on. Frank Belch has put there, it's much better to show a client the images on a large screen. Absolutely, totally agree with you there, Frank. Uh, when it comes to your tethering, you've got a couple of options. You've got the wired option, and you've also got the wireless option. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the, uh, the wireless option in a minute, but the wired option, uh, the company that everybody thinks about when it comes to tethering is Tether Tools. That's what they specialize in. But here's the cable that I would ordinarily uh, use. I don't actually use it now because I do shoot wireless. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But they're made by Tether Tools. They're orange for a reason, so that numpties like me don't lose out where they are and trip over them. That's the idea behind them anyway. But when it comes to actually putting the cables in, connecting it to your computer, it's very, very simple. As you'll see on this uh, little demo here, literally just from this, you, you choose the cable that is the right fit for your camera, whatever kind of fit that you need. You then plug one end into the camera and then the other end, the USB end, will go into the computer. But you can see here that the cables can easily come out, especially if you knock them or trip on them. 
Now, if you trip on them, there's a danger there that you could damage the actual terminal on the, on the camera. That's an expensive fix. But that little gadget you see there, it's a little plastic gadget called a jerk stopper for a reason. Uh, and as you saw there, when I pulled it, it was the actual tension in the in the actual cotton there of that jerk stopper that became taut and not the actual orange cable that was tethering. And that's going to stop you uh, damaging the terminal within the computer. Uh, now, I'm sorry, within the camera. Now, that uh, jerk stopper is just that. I mean, it is literally just a little bit of cotton and a bit of plastic. That's all it is. And that's kind of done me proud while I was shooting Wired uh, for, for God knows how many years. But they have changed things. And this isn't an advert for Tether Tools because I'll tell you now, I, they don't even know I'm doing this. And the links I've got in the actual description part of this video to the kit that I use, the Tether Tools kit, they're not affiliate links. All right, so just so you know that. Tether Tools are the company that do this stuff. But going to sort of things have progressed from the jerk stopper, which saved a lot of, um, a lot of expensive mistakes damaging your cameras. They've now kind of changed it. Uh, so that we have uh, this thing here. It's called a tether block. If I just swap the cameras, I mean, you see it now underneath. You've got this tether block here, and it actually, uh, it's got the Arca Swiss uh, kind of connection on it, so you can put it straight onto the top of your uh, pretty much standard kind of tripod fit, really, unless you've got like a Manfrotto one. But that's what the, uh, the tether block is there. And you can see here is basically what it is. So you can see that it screws underneath the camera. But before you screw it into the underneath the camera, you just kind of like lay the cable out in that little kind of alleyway there. That then fixes it up underneath, and that is absolutely rock solid. So you know it's it's a very it's a small investment. It is a small investment for what could potentially be a very very expensive problem if you damage that connection. Because you can guarantee if you've got your cable plugged directly into your camera you are going to knock it or you are going to trip on it and it's not just going to come straight out it's going to come out at an angle and the chances of that twisting that terminal inside your camera is pretty much guaranteed i know several people that have had it happen to them uh, but that's that there let's have a quick look now then I'll, we'll get some questions by the way as well i'm going to rattle through this first part and then we'll kind of pause and have some uh, in fact let's have a quick look anybody got any comments here at the moment just about the kit because that's pretty much the kit that you need you know you're either going to do it cabled or you're going to do it wireless. And we're going to talk about the wireless side of things in a moment. But let's have a just quick look here. Uh, we've got Luke, my mate Luke's put, um, but it gets expensive when the camera follows. The Absolutely. Yeah, is that from experience, Luke? Is that from experience? Um, let's have a look here. Uh, Brian Jukes, takes expense in a new port on your camera. Yeah, totally. So whether you go for something like the Jerk Stopper, which I think is a cracking name, I really do. Whether you go for something like that or that new Arca plate, and all the links to this stuff, if you go to the description part of the video, I've put a gear page on there, you click on that, and it'll just take to my page on my website where you can see all the stuff that I'm using. Uh, whether you go, I would suggest, I would highly suggest, if you're tethering, at the very least, go for a very inexpensive bit of plastic called a jerk stopper. So that's that there, right, okay, so then, we've talked about the kit, let's now look at the software, because these three pieces of software uh, again, I'm talking from experience here. These are the ones that I have used. I'm not going to tell you about something that I haven't. Lightroom, uh, let's start off with Lightroom, or as it's now called, Lightroom Classic. Now, this is an interesting one because when I was shooting, when I first started out, I was a Nikon shooter and I could use Lightroom. When I was using Canon, I could use Lightroom. Uh, now I'm using Sony, it ends so straightforward. I could use it, but it is not so straightforward. In fact, what I need to do now, in fact, if I just show you this page here, this is on the, this is on the Adobe uh, support, Lightroom tethering support page. And you can see here, there's a list of cameras. That's all the Canon ones. This is all the Nikon ones that you can actually, uh, they've got it all set up so that you can use it with no issues. However, there is this little section here as you scroll down where it says, for all of the camera models that are not listed in this page, contact the camera manufacturer to get information about tethering support in Lightroom Classic. And that is very much the case when it comes to, uh, certainly for me, shooting with um, with a Sony. It isn't so straightforward. Ordinarily, and I'll show you the setup in a minute, ordinarily, you just plug your cable into your camera, plug the other end into the computer, 
and then just set up tethering within Lightroom and you're good to go. That's mainly with your Canons and your Nikons. Any other brands of camera, like it said there, you will need to dive into the manufacturers, maybe their website, and they'll give you some pointers how you can go about using your camera tethered into Lightroom. Some of them, like Sony, require like an extra little plugin or a bit of software. And we'll talk about that just in a moment. But the ordinary setup is this. You would ordinarily, like I say, you've plugged your camera in, you then go to the file menu, tethered capture, and you click on start tethered capture. It's a real simple process. Once you're in there, you're basically going to say, right, what do you want to call this shoot? What's this session called? So you put the name in there. You could then, as you ordinarily would in Lightroom, decide on what you want it to be called. Is it a sequence? Where do you want it to actually put the pictures? Uh, any metadata, keywords, and then just click OK. And if your camera is connected and is compatible without having any kind of extra little add-ons that you need to use, you'll then see this little dialogue thing, this little spinny thing, and it'll connect your camera. And that is it. You would just be up and running, no problems whatsoever. However, from my example, when I'm using Sony, and for any of you out there who are Sony shooters, one thing they do say to use is, uh, for you to be able to tether into Lightroom, you're gonna need to use something called Imaging Edge Desktop. And again, I've put the links to this in the description of the video. Now, if you can get this to work, you're a better man or woman than me. <laughs> that doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean. I could not get this to work. Dave Clayton's in the house. Say hi to Dave, everybody. I just could not get this to work. It just seemed too much of a faff. However, if I could get it to work, this is what you would do. You wouldn't set up tethered shooting. You'd do what's called auto import. And basically what you do is you tell Lightroom to look out for a certain folder on your computer. And if anything appears in that folder, to show it in Lightroom is basically, they call it a watched folder. And the setup thing here is pretty much the same. You would decide what you're gonna call it, any metadata, so on and so forth, and away you go. Once you've done all that, you would then go back to the auto import and then say, enable auto import. Mine's grayed out because, because I didn't actually set that all up. So that's how you would use it if you were uh, able to just plug your camera in, plug it into your computer, and away you go. Or you'd found out how your own camera manufacturer, whatever brand it is you're using, other than Nikon or Canon, uh, how they allow you to tether into Lightroom, then you would set that up, and that's how you would actually go about doing the tethering. It's a little bit of a faff, and for me, I'm not really keen on that. So this is why, and it might kind of, a few questions of people I've noticed have said, I thought they thought I used Capture One for tethering. And uh, I was, until recently. Now, Capture One has been a fantastic solution. It really, really has. I've used it for a, a good while now because it literally is the case. When you're using Capture One, it could not be simpler. You do not even have to go into start tethered shooting or anything like that at all. You literally plug the cable into your camera, plug the other end into your computer, you open Capture One, your camera shows up straight away and you take a picture. Now, one of the things I loved, or two of the things I loved about Capture One was the ease of setup. I mean, there is no setup, it's so incredibly easy. But one of the things that I do is whenever I'm tethering or whenever, whenever I'm doing any photo shoot, I have a habit of turning my camera off and on in between taking pictures, which obviously saves battery power. Capture One, whenever I did that, as soon as I turned the camera on, it would recognize it, bang, and we're up and running again. Now Lightroom, and admittedly this is the other, you know, the older version of Lightroom because I haven't used it for a while doing this. Whenever I would take a picture, I'd turn my camera off, then I'd turn it back on again. Lightroom would then get the spinning wheel of death, and I wouldn't notice it. I'd start taking pictures and go, "Oh yes, totally nailed it." I'd go to look at the computer screen, and there's just nothing there, and it says no camera detected. I'd be like, "Ah." I was gonna say I'd pull my hair out, but that's kind of those days are long gone. But I don't use Capture One now. Now, I'm gonna let you know about Capture One because it is great. However, it does come out at a price and you don't buy it outright. You've got to use it as a subscription, a cloud-based bit of software, and it does regularly check to see if you're still uh, you know, connected to the internet, checking your subscription and so on. But if you were a Sony shooter like I was, I was originally paying $9.99 a month. So for argument's sake, you're looking at £120 extra a year on top of what you're already paying um, with your, if you're a cloud, you know, a creative cloud subscriber. But if you wanted it to have it for every camera, you're looking at £20 a year, 220 £20 a month, £240 a year. And I'll be honest with you, 
I kind of didn't want the expense. Do you know what I mean? Because all I was using it for was tethering. I had somebody earlier on say to me, you know, why don't you just use Capture One? Well, you know, speaking for myself, I have been brought up using Adobe. My whole workflow, my ecosystem is Adobe. So I've always used Photoshop, I use Lightroom. Lightroom is part of my workflow. Now, when it comes to Capture One, I didn't have to pay for the full pro version. It's got everything in there. They, they do, as you saw there, have a Sony specific watered down version. And there's loads you can do with it. But all I was doing was tethering. So I was paying literally 120 pounds a year just to allow me to tether, which is which is a lot, which is a lot of money. Um, so what I'm using now is, and I am going to come to some questions just in case, uh, is this one here, Smart Shooter. It's Smart Shooter 4. It's made by Tether Tools, and you actually have two. You actually have two versions. You got Smart Shooter 4 or Smart Shooter 4 Pro, and you can see there is a price there. It's a one-off. 69.95 i think it is and for the smart shooter 4 and 195.95 for the pro even the basic one smart shooter 4 does a heck of a lot way more than i would need it to do but it does do a lot i mean the pro version as well will allow you to tether and control up to eight cameras but it works so it works whoop the microphone went off funny then it works really 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 well it really really does um, I use it when I am now wirelessly tethered. I, I could use Smart Shooter 4 if I was just using the wire. Absolutely no problems with that whatsoever. However, I use it with my Smart Shooter. And I've had a lot of questions about this as well. People asking me, you know, you know, why would you use it? How do you use it? Isn't it a lot a bit bulky and so on and so forth? So what I did, because there's lots of things, there's lots of reasons why I use it. Uh, number one, the main reason why I use it, and I wish I'd had this bit of kit two years ago when I started the 39 to 45 portrait project, because it means now I shoot tethered wirelessly. I have no wires on my flashes, so there's no wires anywhere. Photographing elderly people where there's that risk of a trip and a fall, which would just be just the worst thing to happen. No wires around totally gets rid of that concern so it's an absolute godsend for that but what i did was i spoke to reached out to tether tools spoke to a very good friend of mine called scott deusa who is an incredible uh, concert photographer he's based out in the states and i asked him some questions to answer your questions about the air direct so i'm going to play that for you now so you can get some of the questions i asked and some of the responses from scott because i thought what better literally than hearing it from the horse's mouth so Scott, one of the main question I get about the Air Direct is why would I why would I want to have an additional bit of hardware when I've already got Wi-Fi built into my camera? Why would I even bother? Well, with the Air Direct, first of all, here it is on top of the camera. It really doesn't take up much real estate. But the thing is, is it is a much uh, stronger antenna than inside the camera. So the the Air Direct can actually um, do Wi-Fi up to uh, it's 200 feet, which is what 60 meters, um, and so you can uh, you can really have this travel far. And the other nice thing is is the Air Direct uses its own battery. Okay, yeah. so Wi-Fi built into the camera uses the camera battery, and uh, uh, I've used Wi-Fi and cameras for many, many years, and you always have to be thinking about battery replacement and stuff. But when you replace the battery in the camera, you lose your connection. And then when you lose your connection, you have to reconfigure back into the network and you have to get it all running again. Well, with the Air Direct, the nice thing is, is you can actually take, and I have right here, um, it comes with a cable that can actually plug into the side of it and um, so there's a little DC cable that plugs right into the side right here. And this can go to a USB battery. So what I can do is I can oh, plug this right. into a small USB battery. That'll give it power. I can take this battery out, put a new one in, and then unplug this. And I never lost my connection to the, uh, to the network. So one of those, like, um, those power bank things that you can kind of either charge your yeah. phone with and stuff like that. Sure, any, oh, any no, USB never knew that. battery power that you can get, um, and you just plug this guy right into the side right here, and then you'll be running off USB. 
um, when you're plugged into that, and then uh, and then change your battery out, put a new battery in, unplug it, and you're ready to go. And the, the so, batteries, I think, if I'm trying to remember now what um, Jessica told me about the batteries for that. That's the old, it's kind of like a Canon, the Canon kind of battery, isn't it? That yeah, it's an LTE6 Canon style battery. Um, so they're really inexpensive and they're easy to find. So if you just, I mean, if you have two of them, I mean, this thing, I've had this on um, running in my house, like I'm, like I'm here right now um, doing demos and stuff. It's been running for hours and, yeah. and the battery light on the side is right here. So you can see the, the blue light is the Wi-Fi connection and it's solid, but then the battery light is green, showing that it's full, and it'll go down to yellow, and then it'll go down to red. So when it gets down to red, you can plug that cable in that I just showed you, change the battery out with a different one, and then uh, you're up and running. So it's, you, so yeah, you, that's the you've got yours on the on the the hot shoe of your camera there, haven't you? Because again, I mean, because I use I use flash quite a lot, and I know that obviously you being the a concert photographer. You know when you're able to go out obviously the situation at the minute but when you're out there you're just kind of rocking with the natural light that you've got in this in the stadium and places aren't you but i've got i mean i'm just i don't know if you've seen this but this is this was my because one of the questions i got was if that's on my hot shoe where can i put my um trigger my remote trigger for my flash so sure ugh, leaning over i don't know if you can see that but i've got like a my solution was that small rig is it called yeah small rig so yeah. I've got like a bit on the side there. So that's where my air direct goes and that's where my trigger goes. So that's perfect. Actually, the air direct you can get with it. You, if you have like a, an Arca bracket on your, an L bracket on your camera, you can get the air direct Arca clamp, which will sit like right here on the side. And then you can put your trigger up in the hot shoe. So it doesn't have to sit in the hot shoe. It can go anywhere you want. Um, Tether Tools also makes a, um, a T-bar across the top. So you can actually have a bar in the hot shoe where the air direct sits here and the trigger sits right next to it. So it doesn't have to sit in the hot shoe any way you do it. And your solution is absolutely perfect. You just get it off the hot shoe, put it on the side of the camera, and it works just great. Cool. So that, that combined with that smart shooter software, which I'm going to kind of cover in the next, probably the next uh, yeah. webinar that I do, because that now is a... I've got to say that is seriously quick and this this is for me i'm not kind of you know getting cash in the pocket for saying any of this i'm just kind of i was saying to you earlier before we went online that since i'm now using this new stuff my workflow i don't think i've ever been happy with it because now some of the videos i've been showing when i've been out on location doing photo shoots i've literally got my camera in my hand there's no wires i just wish i'd had this whilst i was <laughs> doing all those photographs of those veterans in their houses over the last couple of years because you know your elderly veterans walking around and I'm so so wary about having wires everywhere I just wish I'd had it back then do you know what I mean but uh, so quick at sending the files over so I am I am really really happy with it so I just wanted to kind of get you in because I can say anything do you know what I mean I wanted to hear it from the horse's mouth so to speak sure. then, you know what's it uh, what's it like but um yeah loving it really loving it no Shooting, you're shooting air direct into your laptop, but I mean, like yeah. for anybody who's watching this, you can go to a mobile device as well. So you can go to an iPad or an iPhone or something, and there's a switch on the side that says mobile or ADU, and ADU stands for air direct utility. And air direct utility is the software on your computer that you run. So when you connect the Wi-Fi network on your computer to the air direct, you start the air direct utility and it says connected. And that basically fools the computer into thinking that um, you have a USB device plugged into a USB port on the computer. So it, it's not, it, it doesn't lose connection that way. It actually, the, the, the cat, you know, you can use Capture One Pro, you can use Smart Shooter, you can use Lightroom, you can shoot into any one of those programs and it thinks that there's a tethered camera plugged in via USB between, because of the AirDirect utility. So that's, that's the connection for it. And um, the nice thing about the AirDirect utility is that it can be bridged to another network. So I have mine set up so it's bridged to my home network. So I can shoot to the computer, but still have the computer on the internet, which yeah. is great. So yeah, you don't have to like go away from the internet on your computer um, with using this. You can actually still, if you're in a studio and you wanna be out on the internet with your computer, but you want this shooting into it, you can bridge the network between here and your uh, your studio network. So, but if you're on location and you just want to shoot to a tablet or a, or an iPhone, you switch it over to mobile 
and you download the Air Remote app, and then you you just connect it to that via Wi-Fi, and it works like a champ. So it's pretty uh, pretty simple. It's it's a really cool device. And and the other thing is it also has a 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks on it. So you just there's one more switch right here on it for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And the 5 gigahertz it works faster, but 2.4 works further. So if you're in a if you're in a situation where you're in a a studio that's just a wide open room and you want transfer speed, five gigahertz is perfect. But if you're on location or if you're shooting in a building where there's multiple walls or a different um, distract, um, sort of like interruptions of the signal, 2.4 will go through walls better and uh, will work further. So that's the other thing you can do with this too. So in, in comparison to built-in Wi-Fi on the camera, this is a whole lot stronger and a lot more robust, and it holds the signal without dropping, which is uh, a bonus. Superb. Well, I think that just about covers it. I'm I'm sold on it. Definitely, <laughs> I'm loving using it. I really am. Scott, thank you. Uh, thanks for your time, mate. Great to catch you up. Um, now, obviously, you I've too, mentioned bro. about you before. We kind of did this, but. Uh, being the kind of you know concert photographer, is there a link what I can send people to so they can kind of see the work that you would ordinarily be doing when it comes to your photography? Yeah, it's my crazy name. So it's scottdiusa.com, S-C-O-T-T-D-I-U-S-S-A.com. And uh, that's got most of my concert stuff up there. I need to update a little bit from the last couple shows in like January and February. But uh, but yeah, that's where that's where they can see my work. Superb. I'll make sure I'll put a link in the uh, description part. But Scott, thank you so much, cool. mate. You got it, Glenn, anytime. Thanks. Good to see you, buddy. You too. He is such a star. What an absolute star. Known Scott for a good few years now. Good, good time. Uh, and he, like I say, is a concert photographer that is just unbelievable. Uh, check out his link in the description part of this video. Uh, Scott also used to do a concert photography class, a whole day class with another good friend of ours, Alan, Alan Hess, and it was just unbelievable. Really, really cool stuff. But... Let's just take a moment to look at some of the questions before I show you that um, how you use that air direct and whatever. So uh, let's have a quick look here. Kirsty McLeod, I recognise those speaker windows. Wonder where I saw them. Oh, the little bits where me and Scott were. Yeah, I reckon you watched the summit, the Photoshop virtual summit. <laughs> That's what they've got there. Uh, let's have a look here. So uh, Diane Arnold's puts so the air direct only needs a cold shoot. Yeah, you just need to be able to support it on the camera somehow, whatever whatever option that you've got there. Uh, William Morton who's put uh, the requirement of an L bracket when you use a flash or trigger is in a hot shoe is the main reason I haven't brought the... Do you know what, William? You don't. You do not need an L bracket. The Tether Tools do a, a little attachment which you can put underneath the camera, which can kind of come to the side and just hold it. So that there are solutions out there. And if it's not a Tether Tools one that you go for, then a company called Small Rig, which is where I've got my L bracket, uh, they do loads of solutions as well. And I... Uh, I think a friend of mine, Luke Orwin, as well, he put there something there. Do you use an L bracket on portrait rotation with the air tool connect? Yeah, Luke, I'd, I'd actually do because um, it's an Arca, uh, Arca Swiss plate attachment, which is built into it, into the actual uh, Arca block at the bottom and also the side of my L bracket. So even though I've got my trigger and I've got... Uh, the air direct attached I can still go into portrait orientation and there's plenty of room on that arc or attachment there to drop into my, my tripod to tighten down uh, if I'd have still been using the original Manfrotto uh, connection the head there that wouldn't have worked definitely wouldn't have worked but I've converted all my Manfrotto tripods to have a new uh, arc Swiss plate head so that I can use them with all this kind of stuff um, all right let's have a look here Anthony says I like the idea of a t-bar I know what you mean. I think I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Scott mentioned it. I just thought of something else then, but that's my dirty mind. Uh, and Graham Cullerton. Well, that mobile is a surprise. Yeah, Graham, you shooting. This is one thing that somebody said to me before. They didn't want to take more kit with them. But if you think, you know, the size of mobile phone screens these days, I mean, the iPhone 12 Max, I mean, that's just a monster. If you had that with you, which you would anyway, I guess, if you're out and about, and you just have that air direct to shoot straight into it by putting that little switch over, fantastic even though the screens on the back of our cameras are really really good and they're getting better and better it's still nothing beats having it on um on a bigger screen be it a mobile phone or an ipad or, or whatever laptop so that's that there all right let's have a quick look so i want to show you now uh let's have a quick look at this air direct thing here then 
so you can see here all you do connect it in you get loads of wires that come with uh, all, all sorts of different fittings put that one into you into the side of it and then you turn it on you can see the green light there that's the battery light you'll then start to see this blue flashing light that's to say it's going to start uh, creating its own uh, hot spot uh, happens really quickly you'll see it'll eventually stop flashing uh, any second now this is all real time for you so you can see how quick it takes so that's there that's now connected that's now created its own hot spot and then what you'll do let's say on the on the laptop is you would open up the air you'd go to, um, turn on your wi-fi and then you'd look for the air direct there it is it quickly connects to that turn on that air direct utility which scott mentioned about and that sort of says right you're now connected the computer and the camera now are being tricked into thinking there's a usb connection basically and then i go and choose my smart shooter smart shooter for uh, i opened it up took a picture and bam it'll come through there you go really quickly so i i love using smart shooter because i'm just using it as tethering it's a one-off payment i've got it it does way more than i need it to but i haven't got to keep paying for it so I'm, I'm really liking it. And my friend Brian, who's in the uh, chat, he'll vouch for how quick this stuff worked. It really was so quick and easy when we were photographing his car. And what was not also nice was, because the, the weather was stop-start, I mean, like I say, Brian will vouch for this. It was raining, it was sunny, it was windy, it was, it was just unbelievable. So what I did was, when we were photographing Brian's car, I had the boot of my car open and in the back of the car I had my laptop in like this sunshade uh, and obviously wirelessly shot so I'm outside taking the pictures they're going straight onto the computer and I'm got to worry about the rain on the laptop or anything like that so Brian will vouch for how quick once you take the shot it was almost instantaneous that the pictures appear which is which is fantastic which is really really cool um other kit let's have a quick look here so yeah Brian's just put here let's have a quick look here Brian's put it was amazing quick to say yes yeah, 60 61 are there something like that megabyte raw file insanely fast really really quick it's not a case of having to sit there twiddle your thumbs and wait it was really really quick and the great thing is you can set it up as well what do you want it to send and you can do that with most of these bits of software do you want it to send just the jpegs and that's pretty much what i now do because my tethering isn't for backing up it's so that i can have a bigger view of the image is it sharp is there anything in there that i need to look at and maybe change so i'm not bothered about it being the raw necessarily so if i'm using jpegs even quicker to get them sent over um let's have a look here les campbell rookie question but uh, why convert manfrotto not a rookie question mate uh it's because i find that a lot of the industry standard kit that we get l brackets and and stuff from tether tools and some of the other stuff it all is designed to fit on the arca swiss plate and with the manfrotto it's kind of like their own unique kind of fitting um so that's why i've changed it over and also i'm glad i did because as luke mentioned earlier on can i still attach the tether tool the air direct and put my camera into portrait on the tripod if i was using manfrotto i wouldn't be able to because it has to be dead center with the, the arc the arc of swiss i can move it over a little bit because it's quite a long plate tighten it down and it's still rock solid so that's what i do there um let's have a look here mike stapleton's put down about i think he's put down the price i think mike is that the price for the actual air direct i've no idea but there are you know if you don't want to go for that this is it's obviously an investment let's face it folks it is it is an investment um and if you want to shoot tethered you could always just shoot with the wire at the very least i would suggest at the very least go with the wire all right um so there's that there however there is a cheaper option for shooting wireless which i'll show you in a moment um all righty let's just dive i want to show you here oh yeah i was gonna show you this this is just to sort of say when you're outside i've got this little shade there's loads of different things i've got actually for i've never been happier than i am now with my workflow i must admit um because you know outside i can put my laptop in this shade so i can still see the screen if i'm indoors there's a table i would use with the laptop on but there's no way i'm going to use a table outside because i'm bound to knock it the wind would something would happen and it would all fall over so i didn't want to didn't want to do that so um so that's that there mike what are you doing diving off onto websites when we're doing the webinar <laughs> <laughs> right so your options are like i said uh all on saint paul with them has put um do you uh, do a live view option through the tether tool software yes absolutely there is a live view option uh paul for that one as well mate um and kirsty i do my do with mine but it looks like glenn fits without moving the plate i'm not part of that conversation don't know what that is however right just to, to kind of recap on it because i've actually got a favor i want to ask you uh, if you're okay with it your options are i would suggest that you do 
take a look at tethering. I mean, you've got your cable that you got that came with your camera. You might want to get an extension for it if you don't want to go and get one of these ones from Tether Tools. Um, they also do them on, on Amazon and places like that, so you can get them from there. So go for your either tethered, ver your, your wired version or your Air Direct version. Uh, and uh, you've got your software. David, I'll come to that in a moment. She's asking about the L bracket. Then you've got your software choices. If you're Nikon and Canon, you're pretty much sorted. You're, you're good to go with Lightroom. No issues with just plugging in and away you go. Capture One, same thing. You're happy to use Capture One as long as you're happy to, to pay extra every month. You know, up to, well, at least over £120 a month extra if you want to use your tethering. I don't want to use Capture One in my workflow because it's just it's, it's more expense and it's something else to learn. Uh, I'm really happy with the smart shooter. The other uh, option I mentioned about there, if you wanted to shoot wirelessly to uh, mobile devices, was this thing called Case Air. So they also do something called Case Air that you could have a look at as well. And again, the links to this are all going to be in the description part uh, of the video. So let's have a look, quick look here because I've got a favour to ask of you. I just want to dive in because I saw that David asked, uh, please show me an L bracket. What does it do? Okay, David, let me just grab my camera. So this is the L bracket, okay, so it goes, obviously it's called an L bracket because of the way that it goes down the back, or down the side, and then across one of the sides there. So the reason for this, David, is that if you are shooting landscape, you put your camera on the tripod, and you set it to a certain height, let's say if you're doing a portrait, and let's say the axis of where that lens is, is in line with the subject's face. Now if ordinarily you just had the actual um, tripod attachment underneath, you'd then have to kind of angle the ball head over and that would make a camera go lower. You'd have to adjust your tripod and bring it up and then get it all lined up again. The idea behind an L bracket is that whether you have it in landscape or then change it into portrait, the axis of the lens remains constant. So it'll still be at the same, the lens will still be in the same height whether you go portrait or landscape. So it's just a real convenience thing. So it's a really, really, really handy. Um, oh yeah, John Slemp as well. Great, great suggestion, uh, suggestion there, mate. John Slemp, uh, Slemp has mentioned Cam Ranger. That's been around for quite a while, but I know that uh, I know Joel Grimes was using the Cam Ranger, using that to shoot into a, an iPad. So yeah, Cam Ranger is also another solution. So John, thank you very much for bringing that up. Um, last one here, we've got Tampa Bay Audio. Nice handle. I tether all the time, but at least in the studio, I have happy that I have internal systems. Here. Yeah, cool. All right. Obviously, if you're, I think you said you're using the actual internal Wi-Fi there. But like Scott says, if you're shooting for a prolonged period of time, you then got to worry about the batteries going, then disconnecting, then having to connect up again. Um, right. I think that's that on the tethering. I've got a favour to ask. I've got a real favour to ask of you. So we've all had a bit of an interesting year this year, to say the least. In interesting in inverted commas. Um, and there's People have been struggling, okay? Now, I don't know if you know this, but I am uh, ambassador for the Veterans Charity, and there's loads of kind of fundraising that I wanted to do this year that I've not been able to do for obvious reasons, uh, and the charity have really been struggling. This is a, a charity that's very close to my heart, but one thing they've set up is called Be a Hero, Be a Christmas Hero. And basically what this is is where you can donate whatever you want, one pound, one dollar, whatever. But basically what this is going to do is, um, oh, I'll just dive back out of there. What that's basically going to do is they collect the money together and they found that £200 is enough for them to give to a veteran's family who have been really struggling to allow them to have a bit of pride and that £200 in there, that, that um, the charity will buy gifts for the veteran's children. It also provides a full Christmas dinner for the family and two more weeks of food post-Christmas. So it's kind of like be a Christmas hero. So all I'm asking is that if you're going to, you know, spare a quid, spare a fiver, whatever, and just help to raise it, because just £200 is a veterans charity need for each veterans family to be able to do that for them. Presents for the kids, Christmas dinner, and two weeks worth of Christmas food for people who are really struggling for it. So if you want to do it, I'd really, really appreciate it. You don't have to. But if you do do it, the link again is in the description part of the video. If you do it and you want to remain anonymous or whatever, just put a little message in there to them. But just put, if you want to, put GD Webinar, because I kind of want to show Danny, my friend who's the CEO, the power of this community here and the power of the, you know, the photography world and how we all kind of pull together and help each other out. And it'd be nice to know that, you know, even if you're anonymous, we just see that little wording come up that people have done it. So uh, that would be pretty cool. Um, there you go. Right, that's it. This should be the last webinar you see in this location. 
Um, yeah, so two weeks time. I'll be back in two weeks time. Hopefully that is really uh, helpful. In fact, that's on a second. I've got one here. Warren King, I've got just questions coming in. I've been told Capture One is more stable than Lightroom for tethering. Warren, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. Totally with you. That's one of the reasons I explained earlier on that I jived over into Capture One. However, it's an ongoing expense and yeah, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't really want that. Uh, but you're right, it is incredibly stable. However, Adobe and Anthony, my friend Anthony and I saw that he posted saying that Lightroom has become much more reliable. It wasn't very good at the start, but I know they've worked on it and it seems to be a lot better. But uh, listen, folks, that's going to be, uh, that's all from me. I'm going to watch some of the comments in there. Thank you for those of you who've also commented and emailed. I have been, I literally have had loads of emails and comments from people who watched the Photoshop Virtual Summit too. Uh, really, really nice comments and feedback. So I really thank you for that. Um, so I'm going to now disappear. Uh, tomorrow's a big day. We're driving down again, taking more stuff, more stuff being delivered to the house. Uh, I'll, I'll probably keep you posted. You'll just see pictures everywhere. But uh, I hope tonight has been useful. I didn't want to miss doing this one tonight for you. Take a look at tethering. Give it a go because I think it'll make a huge difference to your photography if you're not doing it now. Uh, but I will love you and leave you. Take care of yourselves. Do what you've got to do. And fingers crossed that vaccine they've mentioned about. Let's just hope that really does come true. Uh, but in the meantime, take care. And I'll see you, if not elsewhere, I'll see you back here in two weeks' time. Mm -hmm.